Hello guys, hope I'm audible and visible. Uh, again, uh, I'm not used to this much, so there might be a few glitches. If you am, if I'm audible and visible, just say me a hi. That will be great for me uh, to have an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, I hope I'm audible. And uh, what I thought was every Friday that we will have a quick look about a few images from Robbins Pathology. Because Robbins is one book which is very, very important for entrance exam, be it in your second year, that also is, makes it much important for you to understand and learn about it. One of the common things what an graduate or an aspirant need PG or an INC feels is the exam has lots of images and everything is pink and blue. How many of you have felt that? That the images, whatever I see in your textbook or in an exam or in a Q bank or anything, it's pink and blue. I'm not able to identify that. Any one of you here? So most of them are in that part, right? So what we are going to do here is we are going to spend time to understand the images. Let's make sure the pink and blue make some sense, right? So if you're with me, uh, let's go ahead and let's start a few things new. Hello, Ishwarya. So a few things now to start with. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few images. First, I want your information about this. What do you think about this image? Uh, whatever it may be, if you can come to the diagnose also great. Then we'll read something close to and surrounding that image. Can anyone come to a diagnosis here? Anything which comes to your mind? Any diagnosis, anyone? I'll give you a clue. Uh, the easiest clue here, it's going to be a blood vessel. The pathology of the blood vessel, uh, let's say that it's a pathology of an arteriole or a capillary, a very tiny blood vessel. Okay, let's go through it. Let's dissect the image little by little and try to make sense about the image and learn something new about the image, right? So you can see here RBC. The first clue to identify whether it is a blood vessel or another structure is look at the lumen. Always look for the lumen. Most of the time, lumens might will have RBC so that I can easily know that it's an RB, it's a blood vessel here. So I told it's an arteriole. In general, for an arteriole or a capillary, the tunica media, will it be thick or thin? I'm going with very basic things and just to interpret this image. In general, your tunica media will be very, very thin, right? But here I said it's an arteriole or a capillary, but it's definitely a very thick tunica media. It's a 20x, it's a very, very thick tunica media for an arteriole or a capillary, right? So which means something else is deposited in the tunica media. I'm having a pink color. So the second interpretation for me for the image is I'm having some random pink structure which is stuck to the tunica media of the blood vessel wall here, right? So I'm going to go to very basic terminology, what you must read in the first chapter of Robbins. If something is pink in color, and I'm not sure what it is made of, because when I look at this image now, I'm not sure what it is made of, right? Maybe in future we'll learn what it is made of. When I'm not sure of what it is made of, and it's pink color in a microscopy, what is the term we give? You must have used this term in ARDS, or in neonatal respiratory distress syndrome in the lung, a cartilage which is pink in color, was the term used? Again, remember this forever. I use the term hyaline. So I'm going to use the term hyaline. Your snowflake is right, Ashwarya, but hyaline is a much better term when I don't know what it is made of and something is deposited in a place, right? Now we'll go with pure logic. If I'm having, if I'm having uh, some deposition or some random deposition which is making a hyaline like deposition, good evening, Debraj, in the blood vessel wall and this deposition will definitely make the wall thicker. So I'm going to use the term sclerosed. The blood vessel here looks sclerosed because of some random deposition, right? So combining everything, we'll give a name to it. I said it's an arteriole. So I'm having an hyaline arteriolosclerosis. I'm having a case of a classical case of an hyaline arteriolosclerosis. This is very, very important. It's a very basic term, right? So let's identify why I had this hyaline arteriosclerosis or what made it happen. See, I will, I'm going to go in depth in whatever images, what you're going to discuss in this channel. This is primarily to understand pathology and to enjoy medicine, right? Let's take an arteriole. Uh, how, can anyone tell me uh, one more, another name for an arteriole? We have a name for an arteriole, a random, and maybe an MCQ also. Arterioles are also called as, you must have read them in your anatomy and histology. They're also called as resistance vessels, right? We call arterioles as resistant vessels. So this arteriole is called as a resistant vessel. 
because it takes care of my total peripheral resistance. That's the reason I'm using the term resistant resistance, right? So now here, I'm having a tiny arteriole. If there is a change in blood pressure or I'm having an increased blood pressure, can I say due to the frank starling interaction, the outward force will become more in the arteriole. All the fluid is, will try to go outside, right? So what happens here is due to the increase in the blood pressure, my outward force will increase. My, my fluid will go outside. But I'm right, am I right in saying that in case of hypertension, a simple normal hypertension, there'll be no tissue edema. Is that right statement? I won't have tissue edema, right? In a simple hypertension, I am not going to have tissue edema, which means the fluid will not go outside. My vessel wall will compensate for it and definitely I'll take care of that. But what happens is, due to the outward force, there are a few proteins in my plasma, plasma proteins. Those get deposited in the vessel wall, right? This outward force will make sure it deposits my, I'll write PP for plasma proteins on the wall of the vessel. Okay? And hypertension, like you guys know, it's a chronic pathology. Yeah? It's not going to get sorted in a day or a week. It's going to be there forever and ever and ever, right? It's going to be there for years together. And I'm sure that most of the hypertensives will never have an 120 80 BP. It will fluctuate a lot. So which means constantly throughout the year, the patient is going to have an outward force, which will make sure the plasma proteins get deposited very minute quantity in the vessel wall. Let's say it looks like this. And proteins in my microscopy will look pink in color. So some pink layer gets formed. I'll leave it for a few more years. The pink layer will become thicker. When the pink layer becomes thicker, my entire vessel wall is going to look pink in color, right? Like what we saw in the image, right? Is an entire vessel wall becoming pink in color? So will it affect the lumen size? Will the lumen become smaller here? Yes, absolutely. This will reduce my lumen size. This will reduce the size of the lumen. Once the lumen size reduces, that's what is going to have an effect on your hypertension. Right? We look at the long-term complications of hypertension. This is what I see in microscopy. We know the pathogenesis. Can easily term, name it also. It's hyaline involving my arteriole and it's going to have pink color. Uh, I'm not understanding it there, Brush. For cholesterol in a normal epidemic patient in hypertension, see cholesterol. Are you asking that will cholesterol also get deposited in the vessel wall? Is that the question? Okay, see cholesterol. Anything, see anything in my serum will get deposited in the vessel wall. But the good thing is, when cholesterol is in normal quantity, it is not going to cause inflammation. It will get deposited and automatically it will be absorbed, it will come back again. Only when cholesterol is in more higher quantity, when I have an endothelial damage, that will go into the endothelium, will cause inflammation. The hypercholesteremia is a problem for me. Let's assume cholesterol like this. Uh, let's take cholesterol like a crystal. The cholesterol esters are crystals, right? When I have a, a bottle of water or a tumbler of water, one spoon of salt, can I say it will get easily miscible? I won't see them as a crystals, right? But when I have five, ten spoons of salt, I will still see the crystals. The crystals are the ones which is going to damage my endothelium, right? If it's in excess, it will not be properly miscible. That kind of damage is my endothelium. That will cause an effect more than a normal person. If I presume that my cholesterol is normal. It will not cause my endothelial damage. Only hypercholesteremia is more risk for me compared to my normal cholesterol levels. Normal cholesterol levels, my body can take care of it, right? Okay. So this is about my first image of today, which is hyaline arteriosclerosis. You know what hyaline arteriosclerosis? Let's kind of try to extrapolate this to a cross finding, right? This happens predominantly in kidney. In kidney, it's not just in kidney. Even if you take retina, whatever arteriole in my body, it will have hyaline arteriosclerosis. But Robbins explains more in depth about kidney. Let's take kidney. I'm going to have tiny, tiny arteriole. All the arteriole of the kidney is going to become smaller because of the lumen's size, right? So can I say this smaller lumen will definitely cause ischemia? Will it cause resultant ischemia? It will definitely cause resultant ischemia, right? Let's assume like this. This was a perfectly normal kidney for me. And my entire cortex will have glomerulus. Every glomerulus will have afferent and an efferent arteriole and all the arteriole will become narrow, which means everywhere here, I am going to have narrowed arteriole throughout my kidney. It's a three-dimensional structure. So throughout my kidney, I am going to have tiny narrowed arteriole. So when this arteriole becomes narrowed, 
and when I have ischemia, in the long term, I can have infarct and necrosis. Let's assume that wherever I put a dot, there I'm going to have a tiny bit of damage. So I'm right in saying that wherever there's a damage, there'll be a tiny dip here in the gross surface because there is a little bit of cell loss there. My gross surface kind of becomes irregular, right? So this gross surface becomes irregular, right? So this is called as a granular appearance of the kidney. And over the period of time, if throughout the kidney, this damage is going to happen, any tiny, tiny tissue loss, the kidney will definitely become smaller, right? It's called as granular contracted kidney. Just a granular contracted kidney, right? That's one of the explanations in the gross image for in case of a benign chronic hypertension, right? That's first. So we saw two things today here. One is about my microscopic image of a hypertension, that's island arteriosclerosis, and the gross image, my granular contracted kidney, right? Uh, since we are hypertension, we'll look at one more thing as well, right? Uh, I'm going to, as I said, I will take a little bit portion of it daily so that we can assimilate it and over the period of time we can learn more about it. Let's take malignant hypertension. When do you call any hypertension malignant? Like what, what should be the blood pressure for me to call it malignant? What should be the blood pressure for me to call it malignant hypertension or hypertensive urgency or emergency? It's around the range of 190 or 200, right? It's extremely high. So when the blood pressure is extremely high, I use the malignant hypertension. Even if it's malignant or benign, my only target vessel is RTO, right? So in case of malignant hypertension, let's look at the pathogenesis and let's imagine what will happen in microscopy. Let's say around 190 or 200, 200 millimeters of mercury, and it's going to affect my same tiny arteriole. The arteriole is going to be affected in case of a malignant hypertension also. If it's going to get affected in the malignant hypertension, my arteriole cannot tackle this blood pressure. Will it rupture? Automatically it will rupture, right? Let's assume this is my tiny arteriole. I am drawing a longitudinal surface. It cannot handle this pressure, so automatically it ruptures. When I am having a rupture of arteriole, let's assume my skin had rupture of arteriole. What do you think will be the presentation? What will you call the clinical symptom as? Rupture of arteriole in skin. I am going to use the term petechias or purpuras, right? The same term I will use here, petechias or purpuras. But again, when I take kidney, on the surface of kidney, I'll have petty cane purpura. In other words, we use the term tree bitten kidney. That's an MCG for you, right? So my arteriole will rupture with the extremely high blood pressure. So in the gross appearance, I'm going to have tiny, tiny petty case and purpuras on the surface of kidney. And we used to call them a tree bitten appearance of the kidney. Right? It's, it's a very, very simple thing. It's just extrapolation of what I'm going to see in microscope, right? Now let's go to the microscopy. Cross we are sorted with malignant hypertension. So when I take microscopy, I'm having a rupture. At the site of rupture, am I right in saying that there will be tissue loss or cell death? Yes. What type of cell death happens in blood vessel? Coagulative, liquefactive, fibrinoid, fat, caseous. What type of necrosis? Anything involving vessel wall is, has to be fibrinoid necrosis, right? The first finding for me in microscopy is I will have fibrinoid necrosis because that's a type of necrosis seen in any vessel wall dark. That's again basic thing for me that I'll know it. Let's assume the patient is having malignant hypertension. If this is true, the entire arteriole of the kidney will rupture, right? If it ruptures, if the entire arteriole of the kidney ruptures, I have a very difficult problem saying that. Hope I'm audible and Otherwise, am I audible visible? Sorry, I think I have an error in my connection. Okay, I think I have an error in connection. Let's complete this. Hopefully, it gets completed. The second finding for me is I have to take care of this, right? So, to in order to take care of this, I will thicken the vessel wall. As my second finding here, 
which I'm going to call it as hyperplastic arterial sclerosis. Right? So I'm, I just wanted to complete two images here. We'll look at these image like uh, things every day on a regular basis so that on a long term, we all of us will learn together something. Right? Thank you for your time. See you soon. Till then, bye bye. And unfortunately, my internet is gone. Sorry.